Hey, what is up, everybody? Welcome to the Lashley Podcast. And today we have Mr. Rico Rells, Trail Crawford, here for us. Um, super, awesome, super excited about this. Um, we're going to talk about some really cool stuff. Our title today is, is Get Out of the Ghetto. And what we mean by that is, is obviously, um, where, how, you, how you're raised as a child or what you, what you go through when you're younger growing up or through your teen years, maybe you get in trouble, you have a drug problem, you whatever, right? You can make the conscious decision to get to get out of the ghetto or get out of the hard part. Rico has a super amazing story about how right you turned your turned your life around. And we're gonna get into that and just kinda of talking about how to you know how to make that choice to, to we say get out of the ghetto baby. You know, to change your life. You don't you don't have just because something bad happens, you don't have to you don't have to follow that path. You can you can change it. Um, and also Rico the uh, what, what was like your video call to the one? Uh, they call it the the Walmart dad video, the Walmart yeah. viral video. Every yeah. every time I get somewhere and I get in conversation with regular people, they go, oh, oh wait wait, I know you from somewhere. You're, you're the Walmart dad. I'm like, yeah, just call me Rico. <laughs> we're normal people. I don't I don't start up the conversation like, hey, how you doing? I'm, like, I'm the Walmart dad. It makes you sound the Walmart dad. Yeah, right. you know what I'm saying. But that's just what it is. We kind of go with it. Long story short, daughter had an attitude like anybody else's child. <laughs> Took her outside, sat her on the car, let her cool down, had a great time. People judged up and down, and that's kind of where the story started from getting out of the ghetto. You know, like people would judge you based on parents. You know, some of us, well, actually, we're all parents. So we, you'll go to this thing when people tell you how to raise your child, and it is kind of where you're from, how you're, how you're raised, and you put that into your, your children. So, right. Yeah. yeah, I love it. Love it. Super awesome. So, do you just want to go ahead and let's, let's hear your story? I mean, yeah, I mean basically. I'm growing, you know, growing up, growing up in Mansfield. You know, growing up in Mansfield, we um, you, you hold on, like it's you got it. Yeah, 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 you got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. That's, that's way better. Yeah. That's why. That's why I put these on. Yeah, this is the microphone. I'm gonna get you some more. So yeah, sorry. It doesn't feel like you're Yeah, we have many stories to tell from Mansfield. Mansfield is a great city. It always has been. Every state, every city has a story to tell. Good parts, bad parts. Unfortunately, I grew up in some of the bad parts. You know, growing up with a multicultural family, we've been through many experiences. We've had many situations to where we'll, we'll never tell these stories to our children. Mm -hmm. um, making the right decisions was always what I wanted to do as a child. Mm -hmm. But I will say, being left astray with really no solid male figure, you know, I don't really try to fault my dad for too many mistakes, but some of those were his. I chose as a young man to not blame him for those things because I didn't want that to transpire in my adult life. Right. So I made all the wrong decisions. I, to me, they were right because they were fun. You know, I'm like, I'm gonna hang out with my friends. You know, we're we're not supposed to be here. Not supposed to do this. I'm not supposed to have this in my bag. Right. But I'm gonna do it. You know, there's no one to really tell me no. Right. And everybody that really cared about me kind of <laughs> motivated me to do it the safe way, right. but never motivated me to do it. The right way, you know, right. not to do it. Yeah. So, you know, I found myself, we want to have these stories with some of the younger individuals, the young homies we call them, because they call you OG, they call you um, they call you these things like, oh shit, it's happening. Like, they're, you're fine, you're fine. Like, they're, like, they're looking at me like, oh, you're the, I'm like, don't, I don't want to be that high. Let me tell you what someone should have told me. At this point, when we're having that conversation with the younger homie, you know, we're telling them, like, sorry to bitch you. I'm glad I'm not the one that influenced you, but let me be the one to tell you. Since you know what you're doing, you know what's wrong. Yeah. There's many opportunities to do it right. If you have a skill to sell anything, right, right, you can sell anything. Right. So why choose to do things that you know really, literally are going to harm other individuals? Right. I don't knock any hustler. Yeah. I've been that person getting up. No. Right. I've been the person looked upon with. Know the frown, like why are you here? We know what you do, we know what you're about, and I'm still trying to be great in my soul. I'm like, I'm trying to be right from being wrong. I, I literally am trying to use every wrong that I've done because, in this way, we have accumulated a lot of assets. We have, you know, some of the best Fortune 500 owners to tell you they learn greater from the hustlers out here than they do anybody in college, absolutely, because they know that they know the risk, they know yeah. the hustles, and growing up in individual in individual environments where you can actually go through some of these things people mm -hmm. only see on movies you know some of my lifestyle has been because of me it wasn't just because of all the wrong place wrong time mm -hmm. i chose to be at the wrong place right at now, the wrong time now did like choosing choosing that did you what did you say your, your parents were your yeah parents i, were I would say you know, like what, what got you what, what got you down that path what got me down that path is just seeing people have stuff you think you deserve mm -hmm. you know right. you are and you are motivated by your partner not come to school 16 years old, 
He's in my class. He sit right next to me every day. Well, how the hell did you buy a brand new car with 2020s? And they're like, yeah. I want to know. Honestly, this is how I did it. And you're like, hmm. It's easy. One plus one is two. Yeah. yeah. If you can do hustle, it, you'll get you every time. Yeah. One plus one is two. If I give you this, tell you to do that, bring it back to me, you'll have this every single time. Right. Yeah. I've said it in the song. You know, you can keep this, bring me back 300, keep 100, come back and do that until you get 300, start over. Yeah. And it's, it's a reoccurring recipe we all know. Mm-hmm. Right. In my generation, my, my group of people, we, we made this pact to try to not replicate it so much. And it's hard because even telling the story plants the seed. No matter yeah. what the goal of the story is, negative right. or positive, you're still planting the seed of like you can do it this way. Mm-hmm. But there's many options. Right. What what was what was the one thing, right? So like growing up, at, at what point did you realize that um, I need to make a change or I don't want to I don't want to do this anymore? Like what led you to that that you would call like your breaking point or boiling point rock or whatever? Yeah. It was. What's, what's that? Rock bottom. Some people call it rock bottom. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was, yeah, it was rock really being with choosing to be friends with family to be friends with friends, yeah. to continue to, like, I I went through it to where I lost my stepfather, and, you know, we were going through things legally with mm-hmm. the department because of him, but yeah. we we are a family, so we stand behind each other. Mm-hmm. That kind of let me know. Like, I remember telling my mom, when I turned 18, I'll stop. Because mm-hmm. at that point in my life, I looked at my mom who cared about everything I was doing, who mm-hmm. didn't really try to stop everything I was doing. I just kind of told her, like, at this point, I'm not afraid because I'm a kid. I'll be tried yeah. as a kid. You know, you get these stupid yeah. things. Even a young homie, oh, I'll be cool. Because the big homie said, you, you take it, man. You, you'll be cool. You ain't even 18 yet. And you right. believe that. Because right. in some states, it's really cool. But right. some states will hold you till you're yeah. 18. Oh, you happy birthday. Yeah. Now you're going to so over you, here. You said if you get in trouble, right? Yeah, you get in trouble. Right. Like, you're just not afraid to get in trouble. So as a, as a kid with that mentality of that street mentality, that's what really... Gives you no fear. Like I'm still a kid. Right. The police know I'm a kid. So it's it's, so it's, it's like a grain. It's like a grain that as a kid, and it, just, it you stays there. It's easy adult, to basically. motivate the youth in everything you see around the world. Even as yeah. us as, as trainers, as fighters, as owners, as fathers, we motivate the youth because they see us doing things they want to do. Right. So we utilize our greatness and make sure we do it. Some people utilize their negative, and right. it does motivate people. You, yeah. your, your environment is who you are. I don't take anything from any hustler. Anybody still doing it? I really pray for them. I really like, hey, if you're going to do it, man, I'm pray for you. I'm going to right. make sure you safe. I'm not going to say nothing. I'm not going to tell nothing. It's just because mm-hmm. I've been there. Yeah. And I wanted somebody to just be like, hey, just be safe. I, I'm not, can't tell you nothing different. Mm-hmm. Your mom will tell you I love you. Be in the house. I'm like, mm, all right, I'll try. Yeah. What, what's, now, what's what's one advice that you give? Not even, it doesn't have to be to like, right, like like maybe the, the hustler or the kid like on the street, you know, that, that you've been there and you, you know, it's not a good path, obviously, right? It's not. But not even just from them, but to even, let's say, the, like we said, it all, it all kind of go together, like the, the kid that grows up in the home mm-hmm. where, right. you know, their parents are obese or maybe yeah. they have, they have money problems. They just see like, I, like they're, they're getting raised in an environment where it's like, they're prone to either going to have, you know, I have to be obese because my parents were obese or I have to yeah. be broke because my parents were broke or I have, you, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I get it. It's right. We say it all the time, man, you're. Your choices about you are based on you. Mm-hmm. I, like I said in the beginning, the comment, I don't try to use my father's absence as an excuse to why I'm so right. negative. Because he wasn't always absent. It was just right. things in mm-hmm. life as a father, as I thought as a child, because mm-hmm. I wasn't a father yet, you should do mm-hmm. as a father right. to your son right. to prepare him to be a man. Right. I tell everyone, you can't use that as an excuse mm-hmm. for you to choose to fail. If right. you fail by any means necessary, yeah. whether it's your fault or just by chance, it is your choice to make it better. If you feel like you have a problem health-wise, weight-wise, it's only you who can do it. You can pay the best trainer in the world. They give you the best advice. They give you the best training. Do you believe it enough to actually do it? My conversations in these last two weeks in my personal life have been based on you can do anything you want to do. You cannot tell I'm too old. It's too late. I'm like, no. Oh, absolutely. You can't. Yeah. I've, I've been, you know, March 20th. March 10th, 2020 is when the last time I was in my actual massage office due to the whole mm-hmm. pandemic, whatever. Yeah, yeah. That's so. March 10th, 2022 was the last day I was in a job I never wanted to be in to go back to my massage office. And yeah. I chose to make steps in that time between to focus on how I am as a person, mm-hmm. what I've done, how I've grown, and to, you know, show that. You know, I've told my son, you know, my son's like, Dad, why'd you go pick up a job? Just to show you that sometimes you just got to go do things. Right. right. I can't Absolutely. sit here and be complaining yeah. and be, you know, having my lifestyle going down yeah. and not take ownership for it, whether it takes someone bringing that to my life, whether it takes me just sucking it up and doing it. I have to change. If I don't, I'm the reason I'm stuck where I'm at. 
Yeah. And what and one thing you're saying a lot too is this is, is taking responsibility for your own actions at, at all. Got to. Yeah, at all, all, you know, all I levels. messed up my life and I did the choices I did to give me the you know the the reputation that I have and I am responsible for shedding all that and doing forward. Mm -hmm. Right, because you could have been like, Oh, it's you know, it's it's my dad's fault or it's my okay. uncle's fault or Well my question, what was yeah, your yeah, talking yeah, talking to the yeah, you can't you can't hear you. Um <clears throat> What was your dad's dad like? Did your dad repeat what his father did? I would say my biological father, my grandfather, is from what I was on a great man. My stepfather, who I was, you know, predominantly raised by, his father was was absent. So both my parents, my mother and my father, kind of had a vendetta against their own parents. That they literally did feed into us as children. We knew my grandmother gave my mom before adoption. We knew my father never knew his father. Also, my real father just chose to be. A boy. I pretty much explain it like that. Mm -hmm. Just say a boy? A boy. Just like going out and living his life and I got kids, I give them, I pick them up, still yeah. kick it. But he was an adult. There's nothing I can tell what I think you should do as a father if I'm a child. I totally flipped that with my kids. My mm -hmm. kids have an open floor platform. We have these discussions. Let me know what you feel like I'm doing as a father. Right, wrong, whatever you think. Yeah. Vice versa. We'll have the conversation. We'll move along. If you can't tell me how you feel, and I can't accept that, I can't really tell you I accept, respect, and love you. Mm -hmm. Vice versa. Just let me be me. Let me get off my chest. I don't mean it personally, but personally, this is how I feel. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about why we feel that. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody in my relationship too. I have to learn that being a man with a woman, you know, father versus mother. Mm -hmm. You guys aren't the best at talking because of some of the stuff we go through and we're taught not to show or to speak or be weak because we have to be protective mm -hmm. and be strong and be leaders but I tell my boys if you're going to cry you're going to cry somebody can make fun of you you punch me in the eye not really like that but you know like you know like I'm like still that. a tough man but the toughest man in the world can show he's weak the lion roars because he has a thorn he's not going to let you touch him though because he's hurt mm -hmm. he will strike him but it takes the softest grounding neutral understanding presence energy to get him to flip the paw to pull it out and he's going to scream like oh god almighty he's going to roar and then he's going to be like oh well thank you my bad and thank you for not judging me for going through something painful that i didn't realize i needed help with point blank now uh, is it hard any of your and your family still you know living that lifestyle like your, your lifestyle like i would say lifestyle? yes and no i would say yes and no because i choose not to know like sure. you know mentally i'm, I'm not stupid Right, but right. Mentally, I'm not stupid mm -hmm. enough to know to care about it because we're all adults. Mm -hmm. And I tell anybody I come into contact with, you know, I don't really, I don't even know your business if it doesn't pertain to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. All I do is I pray for you. I'm, I'm about it. I'm from it. I can smell it on you. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you know who mm -hmm. you are and what you choose to be. I just pray for you when you walk outside in the world that everything you're after, you get it how you're supposed to get it. And anything against you is never going to be with you. Mm -hmm. That's why it's there. I'm a firm believer in all of that mess. So I mean, I try not to focus on who's doing what and just mm -hmm. pray that people can find their way doing it really how they need to. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, the reason I asked you that question when you stopped in the other day and we decided yeah. we were going to do this, we we're talking about how some of these things are like passed down generation to generation. Mm -hmm. And Kylie said it almost becomes like genetic. It is. Almost. It really is from a, like it, whatever you believe in, man, genetic, science, religion, energy. Mm -hmm. It's all true because it. If I teach it, you know it. If I seen it, I know it. That's, if that's I hear my it, I thing. Know. Kids do what they see. Yeah. Now and that's, that's I tell people this, even like in here, and you know what you know what we do with martial arts. They they're the best ones. Teach them young, they go up and yeah. do it. They're so they they only know what they know. Mm -hmm. So why can't we show our children what we really want them to know? Mm -hmm. And they're going to encounter things we don't have any control of. That's mm -hmm. when we act and go ah, stop. That's when we don't touch that because it's hot. I know you didn't know, now you burned, but I'm sorry. I missed that opportunity. I wasn't thinking to teach you before. Or, yeah. hey, that's why I told you, don't touch that because it's hot. Whatever the hot is, mm -hmm. that's why we don't touch it. So, do you feel like, because this is how I feel, do you feel like you broke a cycle? I do, and some, and I will admit that I've probably created some as well, just being inexperienced. You know, before the Walmart thing, I have, as any parent, I have yelled when I probably shouldn't, but my natural reaction of frustration of not knowing what to do, my body reacted in just an abrupt reaction. That causes a reaction in your child. You will see the the cry, the whatever it is. I have done that because really that's all I knew. In my eyes, if I don't hit my child, I'm doing better than my mom and dad. But my voice is hitting me. It took my wife telling me that. She sat me down after one time I scolded the heck out of my kid. She came in the room, you know this, real quiet, real quiet. 
and she was like, hear me out. When you hear that from your wife, <laughs> you are in trouble. Just accept that she's not leaving you. She's actually just wanting you to know this. She says, hear me out. I get it. And I agree with everything you said. I just don't agree with how you said it. In my eyes, I'm like, what do you, what do you mean? I, my mom, my dad would have wouldn't have said anything. I just would have been in the bed somewhere with my head. And I don't know what's going on. But I got it. But you thought you were doing better than yeah, your I thought parents. I was breaking your wife the cycle. said, no, you can do better than that. Yeah, I was yeah. breaking the cycle, being complimented, but then reprimanded because I did create another cycle. It really, enough, again, and that was, I did it again after that. Then I had to realize, like, oh, crap, that, that's what she did. Mm -hmm. Even to the point, like, I get to this point to where I, I still have to stop myself because it's still embedded in me. Like, yeah. I have a voice. I'm like, Parent, parenting has so changed so much. I mean, same thing. Like, uh, obviously, Spanx, right? Yeah. Your kids. Yeah. Spanx. All day. Spanx. Yeah, right. I, I, I was, get it. I was Spanx. And actually, my, my wife and I are fully <clears throat> opposite. We're fully against it now. That's where the Walmart right. video got me in trouble, man. Because people didn't understand where I was coming from. Right. I yeah. have popped the butt. It's, 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 I prefer not to. Right. Yeah. It, yeah you know, <laughs> the, the, same, the same way. And it's like, you know, there's there's so much more to disciplining a child and stuff like that. Just like smacking them or spanking them or smacking them and saying, hey, don't do this. Like, just like just like you said, and um, I think it's, it's it's evolving, which is actually a good it thing. Is, it is because um, he's like everybody, everybody here in this room was spanked as a child, and that was probably just the norm back then, right? Yeah, really, I tell my mom, I never faulted my mom for how she was. I just tell her some things I didn't right. agree with. I chose to just wait till I could change them. When I have a voice, I used it. When I could change things I don't like, that's <laughs> what I know it's okay to do. And it's just it's impossible to. You know, and I always say that I miss all the time. Some kids need to bubble up because that's just all they got. But in my world, because I'm a fighter and trainer, I'm like, just bring them to the gym. We'll make, right. them, we'll make them the best. I tell my son, not too long ago, I told him, don't be a bully because I don't like bullies. He had a little moment to where it wasn't a bully ish moment, but it was kind of labeled bully. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, since you want to be a bully, I'll bring you in the gym and I'll mm -hmm. tell you what a bully does. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, if you want to do something I don't, Rather than really reprimand you, I'll just make you the most healthiest, fit person in the world. You can work right. out and hate yourself and be the most fit person in the world. <laughs> and I mean hate yourself in a way that you're going to be in pain physically because you're moving around and utilizing that energy into something positive. Because I'll be there if my kid's the bully mm -hmm. and I don't like bullies. Oh, absolutely. Know? So why not? You know, you're not even in trouble. Just come in the gym. Kick this bag. Punch this bag. Get in there as far. Do some lift. Do, do something for yourself. And then he actually likes it. Backfired on me. I'm like, mm. <laughs> he likes it. Like this is ridiculous. It works they could. That's all. I'm like, I'm mad about something good and happy, but that's just in and out. There you go. But it, it comes. It comes into the next part, right? Obviously, yeah, overcoming all that and you know, choosing to you know, accept responsibility and get away. You know, get out of the ghetto yeah. if we want to say yeah. it. But but then the next thing is that helps is is having that outlet. True. Right. True. Um, obviously, I know. Uh, Rap, rap, rap. Um, music, good rap, tattoo, music, um, Fox, right? Yeah, and that, and, that, and that was that was your outlet to deal with everything yes, you're sir. struggling with to, to make that tr the choice to be different to break the cycle. I would say fighting actually was the main reason I chose to stay out of trouble. Yeah. I will say your father, my coach, the marketing mm -hmm. rest of soul, um, Matt Trukovich. Mm -hmm. All of JP Jaredowski, the original people I started with, they gave me a reason to stay out of trouble because outside of that building, I represented a branch of them. Right. I couldn't be where I was always at. And then people trust you. I've been a kickboxer since I was 10 years old. Mm -hmm. But even raised by my uncle, he's like, don't go out there and just tell everybody kickbox. People try to fight you. You ain't ready to fight. You know, you'll know if you can fight then. <laughs> so it was kind of like, you know, then I was like, oh, snap. But then I didn't want people just to think. Oh, I'll just take them a big old bag because they're never going to try. Mm -hmm. I, I want to be respectful, but if I had to be disrespectful, quote unquote, could I do that? You know, could I, could I bite that bullet and do it? But that also gave me a reason to check my anger. Mad in school, mad at home. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I tell everybody, go put my face on the bag if you're mad at me and you can beat me all day. Or because right. I'm a fighter, we'll go in the cage and you can go as far, you can hit me physically. Because right. that's, that's what I'm about. Mm -hmm. I'd rather you get your problem out. Because Especially men. Men don't really want to solve an issue until they put their hands on each other. It may not be a death to death fight, but some boys, brothers, I'm gonna punch you because you're my brother. We're gonna fight. Mom and dad split us up. Even brothers and sisters. I had sisters growing up. We fought. It's the human nature to just get this aggression out. But when you have a really solid outlet, lifting weights, running, swimming, basketball, cardio, you know, football, basketball, wrestling, all that. It's you're physically using all that energy into something that really makes you great. Right. Well, plus if you love what you're doing and you're yep. in trouble or in jail, you yep. can't do that. You can't. can't play football, can't spar, can't. Yeah, man. Yeah. I, my big brother had a, 
right before he got in trouble, just really like the first time or second time, he was going to go try for an NFL team because he was just like, I'm, I'm going to go try it. I'm like, why is it just one play? I'm tired of this and like the mess. Mm -hmm. One good celebration night, one bad decision, one wrong picture. Two years of your life go. You know, so, two years a uh, lot. You know, in the last two years, I accomplished <laughs> up and down and then way back up. It'll happen again in two, five more years. But two years of just sitting somewhere where I can do nothing but just physically, you can take care of yourself in there. Like, I have a sister that's incarcerated. She's never been in trouble while she's been in there. She's always taken up the opportunity to educate herself. She's made a plenty of accomplishments. In there, unfortunately, for something that's really wrong, but she took her, her negative and literally has utilized it so much to where she's getting re rewarded for being there. Right. Well, I've seen, uh, like people, got, or people, people, you know, people can change too. Yeah. Whatever, oh, just like, it's your choice, right. like you said right now. It's your choice to yeah. stay or play. You know, and like one thing you were saying, I think it's super important for people to know like what they're trying to get out of. You can see something and make, want to make a change in your life, right. but if you just try to avoid those things, like you're gonna, you're gonna go right back you to keep it. You literally have to find something that you know in place of. You know, you have to take that bad choice or that, you have to take that out, you so, know, and find something to replace it with. You got an extra horsepower, you, you know? might as well put it to the wheels and just get on and go. Mm -hmm. Because it's just, just take the extra mile and go. Mm -hmm. If you really want something, I told my, my youngest kid children this morning, I made them say their affirmations and I said, you know, when you want something, say it, write it down, mm -hmm. believe it, see it, because you want it. I can't give it to you. And if I did, what are you going to do with it? I got to. Oh, I got it now. Case in point, I bought a PC, built it, gaming for my, my podcast, sat in the box for a year. Literally, a year. So when I opened up, my wife said, when did you buy that? I'm like, hmm. <laughs> a year ago. But it was, it was in preparation of like everything. I'm a, I'm a puzzle person. If I give you a 100-piece puzzle and it's only 98, when you put it together, there's two holes missing. All I see is the two holes. I don't read that. The picture is beautiful, but these two holes right here, my OCD is like, it's not complete. It's not a 100-piece puzzle. So until right. I have a hundred pieces, I will not right. even begin to put the puzzle together. I'm that person that counts every piece in the beginning. It's, it's a busybody thing. Yeah. You know, I have a lot of energy, ADHD, whatever they want to label it as. I just want to, let me do it my way. Okay, I'm ready. You can speed all you want to. Beeline. Right. Speed it. I like the scenic route. I like the drive. I like the longevity because it gives like me time. Process. Yeah, I like to see the process. it. And I've learned in my life that that's okay for me because I always finish my list. It's just, I'm just like, mm. This has to go to four, this four has to go to six, six actually has to go to one now, because right. life changes tomorrow, today, and in a few minutes. We don't know. And as parents, mm -hmm. kids sick, got to go, got to take a day off, yeah. got jobs that reprimand you for that. Mm -hmm. Like somehow, I can't, that energy I need back in me. Mm -hmm. When I care about me, I need you to care about me as well, so I know that we can care about each other. Because mm -hmm. if it was you, hey, Chris, take a day off. You know, Matt, take a day off. Me, take a day off. I got you. If, right. I, if I can get you, I got you. Because I can relate to you. I have a kid. I have a life. I have a soul. I have emotions. Check yours. Right. Got you. exactly. Explain it to me like I don't understand. Like even when we come in the gym, if you're all mad and angry, you punch people extra hard. Hey, dude, you okay? What did I do to you? Like I'm just mad. I'm like, okay, now I know that. I'm the type of person that can accept that. Right. Like, okay, hey, just chill out. You know, he's just angry. Just leave him alone. It's not personal. But if you're not that type of caliber, don't roll with him. Don't spar with him. Because right now, that individual's in a state of mind where he or she, they need that release can't right. help them through that process, especially in this environment, because it is healthy to come in here and punch each other. You know, like we get you drugs oh, yeah, and absolutely. that's what we're all, we're fighters. We're strangle one another. That's what we do. Yes, what we do. <laughs> yes, we, 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 we just choke each other until we love each other. That's what it, but it's our release. And then we get up, we love each other, we're happy. We literally choke each other out. Pass, literally, unconscious. Wake up. Yeah, cool. Because hmm? you don't remember. But you know, yeah. <laughs> love you. Thank you. But you learn. You're willing to learn. The misconception about that is like that. And I think there's a big misconception about you know, martial arts. People think you come in here just like it's willy nilly, yes. like boss of all. Like just, things. just trying to kill one another. And all it's time. literally the exact opposite. Right, it it literally, you get on the mat, and it literally teaches you, I'm in this state, I'm mad, but I don't have to act this true, way. True. You know, and I think there's such a, a, a misconception about that. You know, I tell everyone that I personally train, you can't fight mad. Once I registered my opponent's mm -hmm. mat, I already won. Mm -hmm. Because I'm thinking about what I need to do. You're just thinking about hitting, harming, going forward. You don't think about stop signs, stop lights, little oh, lanes crossing. He's out of control. Yeah, he's out of control. control. That's it. Yeah. It's like, you know, the art of drifting. You're in control of being out of control. Yeah. So once I know bigger, smaller, whatever, like I know mm -hmm. my opponent's really mad, I already know what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. Let him 
do whatever he wants to do, and I'll react off of that. Or I'll control the direction of where he's going because he just wants to go one direction. And I, when I first started being a cage fighter, and now I'm a side therapist, I teach some of my older clients, like, oh, you're a cage fighter? Crazy UFC guys, I'm like, not yeah. UFC, no disclaimer, you know, I'm not with them at all, I don't represent them at all, but like, sort of those MMA fights are that type of kind. Mm -hmm. Not every fighter is psycho, but when their cage door closes, it's a whole different thing. There's, there's a light switch. Oh, it, to yeah. be honest, it's light and day. It's really just like when that cage door, you hear it locked behind mm -hmm. you, like, <sighs> now you're in the jungle. It's just you, yeah. that guy, and one person watching you really close. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you have to be that character that they really think everyone are. It is an art. But when we're training, I tell you know, I tell God we're gonna train together, hey bro, we're training. Mm -hmm. Don't hurt yourself because then you can't perform. Mm -hmm. Training, sparring, it goes at that level of moderation. Like do you want to hurt me? Because I don't want to hurt you. Mm -hmm. I can, we can. Right. But let's not. Because we right. can come back tomorrow and work or more stuff. Right. You know, accept where you're weak at so you in jujitsu. I tell some of the guys like, hey, go with some of the other belts because you're not gonna learn. Like it's only so much I can teach you at mine and lower, but you learn really strength and positioning, mm -hmm. stamina from the people who are teaching you. Yeah. Right. Let them lead you. Don't be afraid to be led. Mm -hmm. You're lost. Ask for directions. Um, so we kind of kind of ended up, you know, wrapping up here. What's uh, like, a, what's one advice or something that you've learned <laughs> from your experiences? Someone taught you, whatever, uh, Rex. I, I I like to learn at least one thing from some, you know everybody. So. You know, what's one thing you'd share with everybody, like the most important thing that you've learned, experienced, like whatever, to help someone be you know, be successful? I would say personally for me is don't, stop second guessing your gut. I would say in the last six months, I've literally stopped myself from second guessing my gut. Whatever that is, if you're thinking about, say, what, what do you mean? What if you you're mean thinking about that? changing or choosing this option, mm -hmm. do it. It's not harming you, especially if it's helping you moving forward. You're like, I think I should do this. Do it. Because that is that is your alignment, finally balanced, and it's telling you we have centered on an option. Then you're like, mm, but it might. I'm just going to do this. Mm -hmm. Everyone does it. Everyone yeah. does it. Everyone but you, but that, it. that gut is like that you said, it really knows what you it want. It really does. Because you're, when, you, when your body does a reaction you can't control, it's meant to happen. Goosebumps. You love something. You're in tune. Your energy is focusing on the muscles that's erecting your hair. Massage therapist is called an erector pili. Energy moves everything. Mm -hmm. So those muscles are being actuated by a sense that you feel and it's giving you <coughs> outward projection. I can't push this enough that if you really want something, you have to make the decision to do the change. Right. Stop second guessing if you should do it. Do it. Yeah. Just do it. And I can't say who has that slogan because I don't represent them as well, but that's the best slogan. Just do it, yeah. yeah. I, I agree with that. I agree Just do with it. You. Yeah. Because if you want, you, you don't, you're responsible for everything, up or down. The door yeah. is open. You can, you can open it yourself, walk through it. You never know what's on the other side. The light is there. I can't do that for myself and believe it so I can expect you. So what I do is I do it for myself and I believe it so you can see. Up right. or down, brown, brown, green, which are rich or poor. We, can, we get the same options. Rocket science where kids once... Remember that. They didn't know anything. <laughs> but going back to when you changed your life around, would you say you made a decision? Yeah. You committed to it. Yes, sir. And every day you built on that Definitely. until where you are now. I made the decision to accept that you I never looked wrong. back. Never. Yeah. I couldn't. I remember <laughs> telling my probation officer, I'm going to do what I have to do. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be the one that gives you problems because I don't want this forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every day. I think that's I think it's rare, but it's powerful and it's possible. It was a shock in his face, like, oh man, I got someone that actually wants to change your life. Right. They really look they're they're yeah. surprised. Like you yeah. oh you don't want to keep like no, I didn't I mean yeah, it was cool, it was fun. I had an exit, but I got in trouble before the exit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oosh, missed my exit. Because <laughs> <laughs> I got a full on over and like, yeah, that's what it was. I missed my exit. Okay. And I had if you ever been on two seventy, I'd go all the way around two seventy, just mm -hmm. come back around and get yeah. on the exit. Mm -hmm. So I had, there's nothing, you can't, you can't hide it. You can't deny it. You messed up. You hit a wall. What are you going to do? You can't go through it. If you can't go through it, you're going to go through it. If not, back up, go around, mm -hmm. take the time to detour and accept your fault. Mm -hmm. The only way you get better or fix something is to notice that's broken. Right. You need to fix it. Right. Then you fix it. Right. If you don't fix it, it's not fixed. Mm -hmm. There's no other way I can say it. Yeah. Smart, yeah. educated, Lovely. just... Smart Alec, just it is what it is. One plus one is two. Yeah, simple, simple. Yeah, yeah, complicated. <laughs> yeah.
Um, well, thank you, Rico, for coming in. Um, what's, what's your handle? What's your handles on uh, Everything media? is at Mr. Rico Rails. We got you know Twitch, um, TikTok, Facebook, uh, YouTube, Instagram. You can find me just by typing in those. You know Rico Rails, R I C O R E L Z, and I'll pop up. My life's pretty public, yet private, but public enough that you can find me on pretty much anything. If you haven't seen it yet, the Walmart Dad video, yeah, super awesome it's video. Just on everybody. Somebody's gonna watch it. You know, it's on my Facebook page too. I can see it because one of my followers like, I can't even find it. Can you put it there? I'm like, oh, it's right there. It pops up. I see it once every year, time. It, it up always up. You're like, is this you, dude? I'm like, yeah, it locks with little shorter. That's me. Same love, same love. Yeah, I appreciate you, man. It's been it's been a blessing, and I hope. We continue to be blessed and grow together because it's an awesome family we got here at the gym. And I always tell people that, you know, it's a family environment. If people mm -hmm. care, really. If you don't yeah. care, speak up. Mm -hmm. Don't let them know you care. They'll start to care. This is Lashley Podcast. Thank you for listening. If you believe it, you can, you can achieve it. it. And remember, whatever you do in this life is going to echo in eternity, baby. Right. Have, a great, have a great rest of your week. Bye. Say bye. Bye. Say bye. Say bye. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say bye this time. That is awesome. <laughs>